June 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Kings chapters 13 and 14 from the Old Testament. In the 23rd year of the reign of Judah's King Joash, son of Ahaziah, Jehu's son Jehoaz became king over Israel. He reigned in Samaria for 17 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He continued in the sinful ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had encouraged Israel to sin. He did not repudiate those sins. The Lord was furious with Israel and handed them over to King Hazael of Syria and to Hazael's son Ben-Hadad for many years. Jehoahaz asked for the Lord's mercy, and the Lord responded favorably, for he saw that Israel was oppressed by the king of Syria. The Lord provided a deliverer for Israel, and they were freed from Syria's power. The Israelites once more lived in security, but they did not repudiate the sinful ways of the family of Jeroboam, who encouraged Israel to sin. They continued in those sins. There was even an Asherah pole standing in Samaria. Jehoahaz had no army left except for fifty horsemen, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers. The king of Syria had destroyed his troops and trampled on them like dust. The rest of the events of Jehoahaz's reign, including all his accomplishments and successes, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Jehoahaz passed away and was buried in Samaria. His son Joash replaced him as king. In the 37th year of King Joash's reign over Judah, Jehoahaz's son, Jehoash, became king over Israel. He reigned in Samaria for 16 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not repudiate the sinful ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who encouraged Israel to sin. He continued in those sins. The rest of the events of Joash's reign, including all his accomplishments and his successful war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Joash passed away, and Jeroboam succeeded him on the throne. Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha had a terminal illness. King Joash of Israel went down to visit him. He wept before him and said, My father, my father, the chariot and horsemen of Israel. Elisha told him, Take a bow and some arrows, and he did so. Then Elisha told the king of Israel, Aim the bow. He did so, and Elisha placed his hands on the king's hands. Elisha said, Open the east window, and he did so. Elisha said, Shoot, and he did so. Elisha said, This arrow symbolizes the victory the Lord will give you over Syria. You will annihilate Syria in Aphek. Then Elisha said, Take the arrows, and he did so. He told the king of Israel, Strike the ground. He struck the ground three times and stopped. The prophet got angry at him and said, If you had struck the ground five or six times, you would have annihilated Syria. But now you will defeat Syria only three times. Elisha died and was buried. Moabite raiding parties invaded the land at the beginning of the year. One day, some men were burying a man when they spotted a raiding party, so they threw the dead man into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man came to life and stood on his feet. Now King Hazael of Syria oppressed Israel throughout Jehoahaz's reign, but the Lord had mercy on them and felt pity for them. He extended his favor to them because of the promise he had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has been unwilling to destroy them or remove them from his presence to this very day. When King Hazael of Syria died, his son Ben-Hadad replaced him as king. Jehoahaz's son, Jehoash, took back from Ben-Hadad, son of Hazael, the cities that he had taken from his father, Jehoahaz, in war. Joash defeated him three times and recovered the Israelite cities. In the second year of the reign of Israel's king Joash, son of Johaz, Joash's son, Amaziah, became king over Judah. 
He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Jehoadun, who was from Jerusalem. He did what the Lord approved, but not like David, his father. He followed the example of his father Joash. But the high places were not eliminated. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense on the high places. When he had secured control of the kingdom, he executed the servants who had assassinated his father. But he did not execute the sons of the assassins. He obeyed the Lord's commandments as recorded in the Law Scroll of Moses. Fathers must not be put to death for what their sons do, and sons must not be put to death for what their fathers do. A man must be put to death only for his own sin. He defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Salt Valley. He captured Selah in battle and renamed it Jokthiel, a name it has retained to this very day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, son of Jehoaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel. He said, Come, let's meet face to face. King Jehoahash of Israel sent this message back to King Amaziah of Judah. A thorn bush in Lebanon sent this message to a cedar in Lebanon. Give your daughter to my son as a wife. Then a wild animal of Lebanon came by and trampled down the thorn. You thoroughly defeated Edom, and it has gone to your head. Gloat over your success, but stay in your palace. Why bring calamity on yourself? Why bring down yourself and Judah along with you? But Amaziah would not heed the warning, so King Jehoash of Israel attacked. He and King Amaziah of Judah met face to face in Beth Shemesh of Judah. Judah was defeated by Israel and each man ran back home. King Jehoash of Israel captured King Amaziah of Judah, son of Jehoash, son of Ahaziah, in Beth Shemesh. He attacked Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate a distance of about 600 feet. He took away all the gold and silver, all the items found in the Lord's temple and in the treasuries of the royal palace and some hostages. Then he went back to Samaria. The rest of the events of Jehoash's reign, including all his accomplishments and his successful war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Jehoash passed away and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. His son Jeroboam replaced him as king. King Amaziah, son of Joash of Judah, lived for 15 years after the death of King Jehoash, son of Jehoaz of Israel. The rest of the events of Amaziah's reign are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. Conspirators plotted against him in Jerusalem, so he fled to Lachish, but they sent assassins after him and they killed him there. His body was carried back by horses and he was buried in Jerusalem with his ancestors in the city of David. All the people of Judah took Azariah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in his father Amaziah's place. Azariah built up Elat and restored it to Judah after the king had passed away. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Judah's king Amaziah, son of Joash, Jeroboam, son of Joash, became king over Israel. He reigned for forty-one years in Samaria. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not repudiate the sinful ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who encouraged Israel to sin. He restored the border of Israel from Lebo Hamath in the north to the Sea of the Arabah in the south. In accordance with the word of the Lord God of Israel announced through his servant Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from gath Hefer. The Lord saw Israel's intense suffering. Everyone was weak and incapacitated, and Israel had no deliverer. The Lord had not decreed that he would blot out Israel's memory from under heaven, so he delivered them through Jeroboam, son of Joash. The rest of the events of Jeroboam's reign, including all his accomplishments, 
his military success in restoring Israelite control over Damascus and Hamath are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Jeroboam passed away and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. His son Zechariah replaced him as king. God, right in the middle of all of this reading, there's a little bit of a startling passage uh, about Elisha died and was buried. And then this whole Moabite raiding party (laughs) invaded the land uh, where some men were burying a body. And they tossed the body into Elisha's tomb since they were just holes in the wall right there. And uh, the man, uh, the dead man came to life and stood on his feet. And it seems a a little bit odd, like in the middle of all of this annals of the kings of Israel (laughs) and Judah. But it kind of stuck in my heart as I was studying this passage. And I think about the people who you have not necessarily thrown at us, but the people you have put into our lives uh, to help us uh, refresh, rejuvenate, see a new path. And I just want to thank you today for those people. I had the honor and blessing of having some of those people come into my life as I was uh, spending time uh, traveling for business this past couple weeks. And you would think traveling for business uh, that it would be all about business, but you are just amazing in my life and show me so many different aspects of who you are in my world. And you sent in quite a few people. Uh, to pinpoint certain things in my life to see and to work on. And I just love those relationships, God. So today I thank you for sending those people into my life to rejuvenate me, to refresh me, to make me feel back on my feet again and headed in the right direction. You know, sometimes those people come into my life for mere moments and then they're gone. And there were some people like that that kind of dashed into my life and then dashed out and left me with very valuable information uh, specifically on on helping out daily video bible Uh, but then there's other people that you've put in my life for to be there for great lengths who guide and support and love me uh, in in ways that i am just baffled by just like i'm i'm baffled at the love and forgiveness that you give me So God, thank you for those people. I I just pray for those people today that you would uphold them, um, that you would strengthen their walk, their ministries, um, and their relationships with you. They truly are glorifying you, and they may never know the impact that they had on your kingdom by just simply being there and re-energizing somebody else who's working for your kingdom. Uh, Hopefully, I will tell all of them, uh, but if I don't, please, God, please bless their lives. Uh, and all that they're doing to help your disciples across the world. In your son's name I pray. Amen.